viewers ready for the flight 8386 the second segment we've had uh, one nice night in Tokyo Makuhari district we all enjoyed some lovely sushi as always and now we're looking forward to making this trip two hour flight short one this time <laughs> Okay guys, we're ready for the walk around. We need to do that uh, before every flight. Walk around the plane, have a look that everything's okay, certain systems and uh, basically the technical status has to be, has to be pro proven and uh, once I'm satisfied with that, I'll go up and do the final phase. So I'll start up here, up front, Triple seven Fox Delta start at the nose wheel gear. And here we need to just basically check that the systems are normal in standby and our tires making sure we don't have obvious cuts. is up here, already connected, ready to push us back whenever we get the clearance. I'm going to have a look at the radar door. Just get up on the tow truck for that. Yeah, looking good. Over here we've got the uh, biggest engine in the, in the industry. General Electric, 110,000 pounds uh, thrust rated. Uh, you rarely get to see these big big engines they're obviously expensive but they do the job of uh, pulling the twin jet the triple seven with a takeoff uh, max takeoff weight 350 tons up in the air and uh, even with one engine that would be possible now I'm back at the main main gear looking for the brakes, brake wear indicators showing the brakes. We have our tires, they need to be free of any deep cuts, sort of hydraulic hoses that I can service the brakes. No obvious leakage. I'm looking for the brake wear indicators, they're showing good brakes again. I have no obvious leaks that I can detect. And no cuts to the wheels. Car is looking good. From here I get the view, the back side of the engine. No foreign objects, that's looking good. And I'll continue along the wing, right wing. Have a look at the navigational lights. Also, we've got the static discharges. Should we be hit by a lightning strike? These uh, static discharges sort of lead out the uh, current of the of the lightning to protect the aircraft uh, material. Here we go. The Loading crews finishing up in the Gulf. Looking at the antennas, these flat fins are our belly side antennas. Everything fine for the drainage as well. So back here at the stabilizer, looking for any any anomalies, any dents. But everything's looking fine. From here, I can look at the trailing edge of the left-hand side. 
and the wing's looking fine. And then I repeat the uh, inspection of the landing gear, looking for brake wear, indicators, brakes are fine. Any cuts to the tires, looks so normal. Any obvious features, a few dark spots but that's just hydraulic oil that uh, escapes when you operate the, the gear and that's normal that's, that's all within the standard operating procedure brakes are fine and so are the tires very good back side of the engine nothing detectable there and uh, moving out to the lights under wing looking all of overall good and so are the lights so here we go that is Unobstructed, spinner looking fine, the blades, fan blades are good. All the air in inlet, the intake, seems to be free. Again, left side has uh, steady port, and they're looking fine. So there we go. All ready for a flight. Join me in the cockpit. We'll make this flight together to Seoul. Two hours. Take you there in no time. Yes, uh, my name is Francis. Uh, I'm a horse groom, that means I'm on this cargo flight because we've got horses just behind. Uh, we've got two mares today, coming back from Japan to Frankfurt. Uh, this is my job, I fly average once a week with horses. Um, horses cannot fly on themselves, so you've always got an attendant uh, when you've got horses on a, on a freighter. I will be taking care of them, that means after takeoff, I'm going to check everything's okay for them, uh, check they've got enough hay to eat, uh, give them water, because just like a passenger, uh, a horse can get dihydrated, uh, this is one of the main risks for them, is if they don't drink enough, um, and if, if, as, if as they get upset, just be there to uh, calm them down and tell them everything will be okay. Yeah, so all sorts of horses fly uh, around the world. Uh, this time, the two mares who came specially from France uh, three months ago uh, to be covered by a Japanese stallion. So now they now they are pregnant, and they're going back to uh, give birth uh, next winter, surely in February, uh, in Normandy. Um, otherwise, sometimes you've got race horses who travel, uh, dressage, jumping horses show horses, lots of horse, endurance horses, lots of sort of horses fly. Yeah, so I fly um, depending on where I go uh, on different airlines. Uh, today it's Lufthansa but it can be other airline. Uh, uh, Fators are nearly most of the time triple sevens. You've all got uh, 747s, uh, NCA Cargo, Cargo Lux, uh, TNT, uh, MD-11s, which are I think quite rare now, but I've, which were very nice. Um, sometimes a 330 as well. So yeah, I'm very happy to fly on cargo. I prefer it from flying on a passenger flight. So uh, in here we've got uh, our two horses. Um, they are special containers made for horses. Uh, you can load three horses, uh, there is a partition in between each horse, and you can move it. So today we've only got two, so they could have got extra space. Uh, it's very well done. Uh, you load the horses in the container 
on the ground and after you load the container in the plane uh, you ask the pilots for the temperature what you want uh, they've got food, they've got water, they've got correct temperature so they're really fine flying in there Yeah, so this one uh, is called um, Impassable, which in French means uh, impossible to overtake, which is a quite good name for uh, a racehorse. On the ground, they've got uh, wood chips, which is uh, for them um, to uh, be able to, to for urine and for droppings, uh, not to damage the plane, so it doesn't get out of the container. Um, business class for horses, very comfortable, um, they're not upset, the main thing which is strange with flying is the idea of being in the skies, I don't know, so uh, being in a truck or being in a plane is more or less the same, um, the stressful part for them is more the loading in the container and the loading of the container in the plane, once we're up there it's, uh, it's great for them, and they fly really comfortable. Uh, you've got no roundabouts, no brakes, uh, they can relax and uh, yeah they've got the hay to uh, chew so it helps to relax so everything goes well. Alright, let's say goodbye to the guys from Japan. See you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. So we got the clearance. Um, I already accepted it, so that the uh, oh, that's looking good. Time, All right, yeah. so we are cleared to uh, Incheon Airport. One six right, Tetra six. It's an order of a uh, departure. I've checked the points in the uh, flight management system. It's it's all correct. And squawking three seven four three. Yeah, very good. Next frequency one one six. Yeah. All right. I'll do a printout and uh, yeah. And then I'll then I'll enter the uh, the performance data. So we we got a flap five takeoff. Takeoff two forty eight. Take off 248 and it says 87.1 to 86.6, that's fine. All right, so flaps 5 takeoff. Uh, yeah, what do uh, we want to do? Like to 229 hour crash taxi. taxi to Hotel One Gateway. Taxi to Hotel One Gateway, Nippon Cargo 229 hour. All right. Light variable, yeah, that's look good. Looks plausible. Yeah, clearance is confirmed. You got that, Sebastian? The clearance? Yeah, okay. Great, thank you. So, uh, for our departure yes. briefing, Tetra 6, I have uh, checked the uh, RNAV points and they are as entered, that's fine. All right. We have Tetra uh, constraint 12,000 minimum, which uh, shouldn't be a problem with this weight anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and the departure freak is uh, 24 uh, 2. You've pre selected it, thank you very much. Uh, initially, we've got the heading straight out 157, minimum 600, and uh, direct beams, and then the uh, according to the FMS, basically. Yes, we're moving through. An area of uh, MSA 1,700, and the highest is in, in the Arctic in direction, 4,000. Yes, in the north north western uh, sector. So that's pretty uh, safe from the alt uh, altitudes, yeah. especially uh, with this weight. Yes, yes. 
Anyhow, so we've, uh, did we receive a uh, cruising level? No, we didn't. Yeah, well, it, it's on the clearance. Um, First is uh, maintain level 200, expect 340, so... Uh, so we'll just enter 200 yeah. initially, that's fine. And 340 is our final altitude, which we should expect, so that's... That's good. Confirmed. We'll uh, switch to standard atmosphere in 14,000 feet. Yes. And from there we'll just go to our level 200 and later on maybe whatever they offer us. Yes, okay. And uh, what else is there to say? Well, we've, uh, you've entered my engine out fix, 25 miles You're welcome. from uh, the Narita X-ray 2 uh -huh. point. And there is a mean sea level, uh, level acceleration at 1700. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's climb 4000. Okay. Uh, we're below land, max landing weight, so we'll just turn around, work the uh, Proceed the non-normal procedures yeah. that occur, and then we'll come back and land. Okay. It's it's not a not a critical uh, flight weight-wise. All right. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, any questions from from your side? Um, yeah. I'll, I'll we'll just fly it in. Sorry, we'll fly it in L and V nav, obviously. Yeah. 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 And uh, the uh, regular acceleration that is three thousand here at uh, Tokyo. I Noise abatement uh, yeah, procedure. Uh, entered that one. Perfect. And uh, what else? Yeah, I think with the weight, they, they sometimes offer us the right turn to Tetra, you know that? So if we, yeah, if we have a good climb, they usually do give yeah. an early turn. All right. Otherwise, we do the scenic tour. The scenic tour over dark land. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, what about our passenger in the back? Is he sitting? He's sitting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, feeling, feeling comfortable? Fine. All right, he's looking after the horses, which uh, incidentally, Two pregnant horses on board. Frank, good evening, Air Hong Kong. Two zero nine us and two zero seven request push and stop. Air Hong Kong two zero nine and then in need of first class care. Clear the push and start facing north, Air Hong Kong two zero seven. Ground, ground from cockpit. Go ahead. Yes, please. Could you confirm steering Marita concern? Ramp, good evening, Nipo Cargo. Two eight three request to push start. Grant nine zero three. Very good. May I release brakes? Roger. Did you just mark your brakes? Brakes are really good. Push the start to the west. Nipo Cargo. Two eight three. Start items. Look at that trim, 7.0. Whoa. Yeah, you don't get that every day. No, you don't. Go ahead, before start, checklist. Before start, cabin. Secure. Mobile. Off. Off. MCP. V2162 heading... No, that's not... Heading is incorrect. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> 157. That's why we keep checklists because we can't keep it all up here. So 157 and altitude uh, level 200 as cleared. Yeah, we 2162 heading 157 altitude uh, level 200. Take off speeds. V1. 159er VR 160 V2 162. V1 159er VR 160 and uh, V2 162. CDU uh, brief flight completed. Ramp. Good evening, Korea 001 heavy. Brigade to proceed against the rocket to 24. Korea 001, Narita Ramp, good evening. Zero. Briefing completed. Checklist complete. Thank you. Checklist complete. Checklist complete. Checklist complete. Checklist complete. Checklist complete. Checklist complete. Checklist Ramp good day, Lufthansa Cargo 8386 heavy, stand 210, uh, fully ready, request pushback. Lufthansa Cargo 8386, Narita Ramp, pushback up to phase 2 north. Welcome to Chicago 8386, pushback approved, facing north. Ground from cockpit. Okay. We are ready to push back, parking brake is released, facing north. Roger, face to north, we start pushback. Thank you. So 25. On schedule, as usual. Scheduled airline. Yeah, we made it yesterday as well, I think. That yeah. So, I'll just enter that. 12.25. Here we go. 
Right, they come ground. Go ahead. Orange in clear to start. Thank you, starting up right and left. Roger, come clear. Start right engine. Ready to ramp on upon 8517, spot 223, request pushback. Only point 517, ready to ramp. Push back up to phase 2 zone. Clear to push, phase north, on 233, fuel flow, and here we go, light up. Yeah, that looks good. Start left engine. Sorry, thank you for Air Hong Kong 209. Stand by taxi. Standing by Air Hong Kong 209. Right, take from ground. Go ahead. Set parking brake. Parking brake is set. Roger. Please remove towing equipment as steering fit. For taxi items, flaps five. All right. Yeah, I expect that we'll just go uh, follow the greens up. Yeah, up to Whisk 3 gateway and, uh, yeah. and then, then the uh, right turn and then either Alpha 2 or Alpha 1 full length. Yeah. But we calculated Alpha 2, so we're good for both. We're good to both. Yeah. All right, Dick, come on ground. Yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, Towing system on the 30 pm are removed. Thank you very much. Give a hand signal, right hand side, uh, Arigato and uh, Sayonara. And, uh, wait, hand signal on your right side. Goodbye, Sayonara. Arigato gozaimasu. Bye bye. Whenever you see him, maybe you could give him the uh, thumbs up. Yeah, he's waving. Yeah, thumbs okay. Ah, oh, very good, I saw it as well. Yeah. Hand signal received, flight control check. Taxi, anti ice, auto, recall, checked, flight controls. Checked. Ground equipment. Clear. Checklist complete. Thank you. Request taxi. Look for the cargo 8386, request taxi. Look cargo 8386, hold the shot of Whiskey 3 Gateway, contact the ground 121905. Holding short, uh, Whiskey 3 Gateway and uh, ground 121905 from the cargo 8386. Good day. 
Heavy horses. <laughs> Here we go. All the cars are heavy. Maybe they're fueled up. Yeah. Just to, to get going at the airport. <laughs> All right. And our trusty crew bowed yet again. Yeah, they they bowed uh, yeah. as always. Very well behaved here in yeah. in Japan. It's it's for those who don't know it. If you visit Japan. It's a uh, it's a different kind of experience. They're very courteous. They uh, they bow and as we leave, they they uh, wish us farewell from the apron. You don't get that at every airport worldwide. At some places, you're happy they're just staying long enough <laughs> and not running away and not leaving you by yourself. Yeah. Okay. Left side is clear. Yeah, right and, side uh, as well. I contact ground. Yeah, we hold short. Yeah, over there. Ground control, good day, Lufthansa Cargo, A386 Heavy, reaching with three gateway. Lufthansa Cargo, A386, Night Ground, good evening, runway 16 right, information X-ray, QNH 29906, and hold short of whiskey, three gateway for five minutes. Lufthansa Cargo, A386, QNH 2996, runway 16 right, and we are holding short, whiskey, three gateway. For five minutes. Five minutes. Good right evening, Air Hong Kong 209. We're approaching Whiskey 3. Those are the four Air or five airplanes to the left, which are in front right. of us. Information yeah. X-ray Q&H 29996. Hold a shot of Whiskey 3 Gateway. Thanks, 16 right and information X-ray. Hold short of Whiskey 3 Taxiway. Hong Kong 209. Yeah, the holding point is in between Whiskey and Alpha, so. Package 53, you are number one. Continue taxi to holding point and hold a short of runway 16 right. Number one, continue taxi to holding point, hold short of runway 16 right, Turkish 53. Package 53, contact tower, one one eight, this one two. Tower 18 to Turkish 53, bye bye. Thanks. Can you taxi a bit faster, please, Turkish? <laughs> Who's that? So the Hansa Cargo is 386, hold a short of whiskey 3 getaway. You are number five. Yes. Well, yeah, it uh, wasn't this. We only saw the Whiskey 3 gateway. We left from the cargo Japan Airlines, Boeing 767 to your left, taxi via Alpha to holding point. Lufthansa so Cargo 8386 behind the uh, Japan Airlines 767, right to an Alpha to the holding point. 767. Cargo 283, continue Alpha, then hold yeah, short of Whiskey 3. So right side is clear. Left continue side is to clear. Alpha uh, and hold short Whiskey 3, Nippon Cargo 283. Nippon Cargo is behind us. Very yeah. good. Ready to ground on a point eight five one seven, holding short of Whiskey Three. Information Victor Factory. Only point eight five five seven night ground runway one six right and hold a position for another three minutes. Hold position on the point eight five one seven. Turkers is going. Well, they're all heavy, so should go. Lufthansa Cargo 8386, monitor door 1182. Monitor uh, 1182, Lufthansa Cargo 8386. Good night. Hi. Korean Air 001, after Air Hong Kong, Airbus 306. So, departure frequency is pre selected over here. Yeah.
Yeah. Um, recap. Track is five three. Contact Tokyo departure. One two four. This is the. I'm 24 through the left traffic. Turn, climbing or Nine. an early right turn, yes. depending on traffic. Yeah. I'll try and uh, not make too much uh, fighter pilot moves due to the horses. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Trap is 320, wind 16 at 1, runway 16 right, cleared for takeoff. Normal, five cleared for takeoff, heavy clear, 320. Extended center line, basically. Yes. And, uh, MA319, runway 16 right, line up on the way. Lining up, waiting behind runway 16 okay, right, so runway 319 on the bottom. Okay, so our minimum fuel for takeoff was... Yeah. Well, we had uh, 600, tons, uh, 600 kilograms of taxi, so calculated it's uh, 29.4, we're almost there. Okay, well, for takeoff checklist then. All right. Before takeoff, checklist complete. Checklist complete. Yeah, once again, some cold coffee. CIP 320, contact Tokyo departure. Yes. 124, this is Cold coffee. 124, CIP 320, good night. Good night. The aircraft viewers can't know this, but uh, we actually have an additional crew is handling uh, the technical side of uh, of this video, and uh, I drank his coffee. That's why I still have coffee. <laughs> I need to buy him another one. Emirates three one nine, wind one five zero at one, number one six right, clear for takeoff. Japan Air seven eight four, Narita Tower, number one six right, line up and wait. Standby departure clearance in three minutes due to weak turbulence separation. Yeah. That's our runway, one six track, line up on the wing, stand here, seven, eight, four, nine. Super heavy, yeah, to yeah. the super. Okay, well, I'll just tell Francis. So, Francis, uh, we will take off uh, at uh, 29.3 on the fuel, so that's almost like uh, calculated. Good. Seven eight four, contact Tokyo departure. One two four, this latitude. Right. One two four two, stand there. Seven eight four, please. Please. Lufthansa cargo eight three eight six, wind one four zero two, runway one six right, clear the four takeoff. Runway one six right, clear the takeoff. Lufthansa cargo eight three eight six. Ready. Yeah. Yeah, Hong Kong 209, Narita Tower, runway 16 right, line up and wait. Line up and wait, 16 right, Hong Kong 209. Take off thrust set. Thank you. Positive 
Right. Gear up. Gear up. L nav. Santa Cargo 8386, contact, departure. 1242, Santa Cargo 8386, good night. Good night. Thrust breath, VM speed. Uh, need a radar, good evening, Lufthansa Cargo 8386, heavy, passing 1100. Good evening, Lufthansa Cargo 8386, Tokyo departure, radar contact, climb and maintain level 200. Climb and maintain level 200, Lufthansa Cargo 8386. Flaps one. Flaps up. Flaps up. The Santa Cruz 8386 continue present heading. Let's start to Tetra. Expect a right turn. Thank you, Lufthansa Cargo 8386. Uh, present heading, expecting right turn to Tetra. Very good, continue. Eminence 319, contact Tokyo Control. After takeoff, checklist. After takeoff, checklist complete. Lufthansa Kango 83806, turn right heading 290. Right turn heading 290, Lufthansa Kango 8386. Japan S784, contact Tokyo Control, Fan 33, Desmond 6. 133, Desmond 6, Fan 784. 9. Uh, for the departure, good evening, Korean 001, catching 1200, climbing flag 150. Good evening, Korean 001, Tokyo departure, radar contact, maintain 9000. Maintaining 9000, Korean 001. Look at the Lufthansa Cargo 8386, resume on navigation, direct to Tetra, climb via SID 200, 200. On navigation to Tetra and uh, on um, climbing level 200 on SID. Insert next waypoint Tetra, please. Modified. Execute. And uh, arm L map. Uh, right side clear. Yeah, oh. as far as I can see, it's pretty dark. Yeah. Look at the moon. That looks oh, yeah. fantastic. Nice crescent moon. L nav. Air Hong Kong 209, fly heading 220, vector 2B. Heading 220, Air Hong Kong 209. Yeah, we will be well above uh, 12,000 feet of Tetra. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll switch off the lights. Go ahead. And uh, clear fix. Lufthansa Cargo 803806, contact Tokyo Control. 120, Desmarie 5. 105, Lufthansa Cargo 8386. Good night. Bye bye. Air Hong Kong 2. Very good evening, Lufthansa Cargo 8386, passing uh, 11,400, climbing level 200, Tetra. Lufthansa Cargo 83806, Tokyo Control, Climb and Maintain Flight Level 340. Climb and Maintain Level 340, Lufthansa Cargo 8386. That's our recommended uh, flight level. Yeah, we recommended that That's fine. That's where we want to go. Air Hong Kong 209, Tokyo Control, Climb and Maintain Flight Level 300, Recreate Direct Order. 142, Standard. 
Yeah, we won't see that much of Tokyo. Now there's a low cloud layer yeah. above the uh, city, but still you can sort of sense it through the glow. <laughs> the big city lights. Yeah. Yeah, seatbelt still on. Should we leave them on for the moment, or? Yeah, I was going to wait for t uh, level 200 to pass. Okay. I'm going to lose my shoulder straps. Oh yeah. Here we go. Yeah. One three three decimal for my November one two zero. Here we come. Another. We're looking time wise. Still two hours. Two hours. Two hours. Yeah. 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 Ye
uh, there will be a vet check after costume clearance and then we will we'll load the horses and trucks and follow our way to the stables. So here we are in between our uh, dep departure airport uh, Tokyo Narita International and the uh, Seoul Airport Incheon. We're cruising at 34,000 feet. That's our cruising level on this short flight. And uh, we've got another roughly hour, 10 minutes to go for a scheduled landing. And maybe you were wondering, well, what does the cockpit look like and what are all those buttons for? Well, I can tell you the Boeing 777 freighter version is one of the most efficient cargo planes in the world. And uh, it has a w wide variety of uh, uses. You can go short haul, long haul, uh, very good range. And uh, with two engines, you're always better than the three or four engine planes. Yeah, it's, it's always going to be cost effective, more cost effective. So let's um, take a look at the cockpit. It's, it's basically the standard setup of just about any modern airliner. But uh, it divides itself into uh, various parts. Uh, there is an overhead panel which is up here. We have various systems that we can uh, access and manipulate um, starting with the electrical side uh, we have some lighting down here um, hydraulics fuel and to the right we have the air system air conditioning and some various uh, additional systems that are important for various situations in flight. We even have a compass, a backup uh, compass, which uh, shows us the direction of flight. Down here, the uh, electronic flight uh, system, uh, to be exact, EFIS, it's an electronic flight instrument system. We can uh, interact with our autopilot which is the middle part here we've got the flight altitude and uh, here is the rate by which we climb or descend uh, we have a heading obviously and here we've got a speed indicator right now it's not showing anything because it's getting fed by our flight management system uh, directly but we could interfere and say okay i i want to fly a different speed so i'll just push the button Right now we're at a uh, flight level where we fly by the uh, Mach regime, which is the percentage of speed of sound, or we can fly indicated airspeed. And uh, right now the uh, flight management system is supposed to handle the speed regime, so I'll just give it back to the computer. And uh, here we can Uh, call up various pages on our primary flight display which shows the, uh, s the position in space of the aircraft are we climbing are we descending are we flying a turn uh, we get lots of parameters shown here um, for instance what mode what mode the plane is in are we in cruise or are we descending are we climbing the various modes for each flight phase uh, we have uh, various ways of uh, accomplishing a climb or a descent. We have the uh, speed side, how fast are we? And red usually means don't go there, it's an overspeed. And yellow is also a cautionary zone, that means we're getting too slow. And uh, right now we're pretty much in the middle, which is where we want to be. Down here we've got a compass rose showing us the um, heading and track and for those who don't know it we, we fly through air so if air comes from let's say from the right and in, in this case we actually have the air from from pretty much a headwind on the nose so it's not going to affect our our uh, course above ground 
but um, should the wind come from either side the plane is going to be it's going to move into the wind to correct for the drift because it, otherwise the wind would push us off track so we are getting the track down here and uh, as I said the uh, artificial horizon showing us the position in that we are keeping to stay in a um, uh, equalized or what's the word I'm looking for it's the uh, equilibrium basically the plane is in a, in a stable position not getting faster not slower keeping the altitude and on the right hand side we have our altitude which uh, also s uh, incorporates the um, rate of climb or descent right now it shows zero because we're keeping our flight level now um, we can put the um, air pressure down here we need uh, a, a local air pressure so we have accurate uh, altitude readings during start and landing takeoff and landing moving over to the next uh, uh, navigational display this is a, a multifunctional display we, we can show it in this uh, uh, format we can we can uh, uh, get it in uh, rose mode, so we get a 360 degree uh, view from as as if you would view the plane from uh, from above. And uh, showing here, we we're maintaining a heading of 278, which corresponds to our heading down here, and that pretty much is our uh, course above ground as well, since the wind is not pushing us either side. Now here we're getting the wind reading and our speed above ground so obviously if the wind is from fr from the front it's going to keep us um, relative to the ground we're going to be a, a little slower if the wind is coming from behind traveling through air is the same speed but traveling above ground will be correspondingly higher so here we go uh, we can we can get various informations uh, like airports or um, waypoints that we navigate by uh, down here in the corners we, we're getting our um, uh, radio navigation aids those are uh, um, helping us during navigation we have usually on land so above water you're not going to receive them but above land we, we have various uh, VORs or NDBs, they, they send uh, on different frequencies and we can use them to position, uh, get our position relative to ground. On top of that, obviously, we have global positioning as well and we have an inertial reference system on board. So it's more or less a, a, tr a tree mix of three various reference systems that uh, calculate one uh, mixed position, which is very accurate. Uh, from there we have a standby um, instrument down here should we have a technical problem here we can still go there and uh, get speed and heading and altitude uh, from this part well we've got the multi uh, sorry the um, display select panel up here where we can uh, get system information from the central center pedestal up to either side so if I push this left and I want to have a look at the let's say the electrical system I'll just call it up by pushing it and I can have a view of the electrical system and uh, as for any system we have the hydraulics and uh, the fuel situation right now we it's a short flight so we're not using center tanks um, in this case we're just using our left and right main tank and uh, that gives us uh, a reading of 19.3 tons metric tons uh, 9.6 and 9.7 so the sum is up here and the uh, distribution is down here and from there we can go to the air page here we need to uh, control sometimes we have freight uh, like in this case we have live animals the two horses um, they need a certain set temperature uh, we put 15 degrees so they horses like it a little cooler for us probably it would be a sort of a jacket on temperature but uh, for a horse it's quite comfortable at 15 they generate so much heat 
And then we've got an overview of the, um, the door page. Um, on ground, we would have the, uh, the cargo hold doors open, and that would show on this um, schematic. And from there, I've, uh, what did I miss? Uh, the wheel page, we can uh, monitor uh, pressure and the temperature of the brakes, pressure of the tires, and uh, from there, uh, status page, we, we, we can uh, call up and see um, the oxygen levels. So you, you, can, you can pretty much uh, move the data to any screen where you want it, view it, and get an impression of your status um, at that time. So I'll get rid of that. In the center, um, Ben, you have to correct me or, or jump in if, if you feel there's something I'm overlooking. So far, it's, it's so correct far so good. Tell, so <laughs> <laughs> I won't jump in. <laughs> well, center, here, here's the uh, eCam e uh, um, display. Uh, we, we get our messages. Should a, a system fail in any way, we, we would get it um, shown here, down here, and uh, we would take action accordingly. Um, from there, we move down to the thrust levers. That's uh, obviously, right now we're in automatic mode, so it moves by itself uh, according to the demand for the flight phase. We have speed brakes. Um, the Boeing 777 uh, freighter version has uh, the wider wings um, from the, from the uh, 300 version and uh, the shorter fuselage of the 200 version. So that, that mix means we have very good aerodynamics. And this can sometimes be tricky because uh, you come in high and, and fast and you want to lose altitude. You need this one. This is your best friend. It's going to interrupt the airflow over the um, uh, wings and, and, and this will take away some of the lift. And uh, as, we, as we all know, the lift formula is the uh, lift coefficient multiplied by half the air density multiplied by the speed uh, square multiplied by the surface. So anyone who knows that n knows automatically you need this for the descent of a uh, Boeing 777. Uh, back here we can trim. We have a lever for um, a parking brake. We have the um, fuel flow engine uh, uh, fuel uh, switches. Um, back here we have for a runaway stabilizer trim as only for emergencies. And so are these. They are if should we have an engine fire, we need to uh, stop the fuel flow to the engines. We do that back here. And we've got the audio, three uh, units where we can tune in uh, various frequencies. We, we talk to ground via these radios and uh, we can, uh, we have various bands which we can use the HF high frequency or VHF very high frequency band. Uh, down here we can trim uh, the plane, uh, rudder trim, and uh, here we've got a transponder. It's a secondary radar system, which uh, means it actively receives a pulse from the ground, from a radar station, and then sends a pulse back. That way ATC on the ground can see us on their radar screen. They see, okay, here is the Lufthansa Cargo 8386 moving from point A to point B, and they, they can more accu accurately monitor the airspace, make sure that we don't get too close to other aircraft. Um, yeah, that's pretty much my side. Uh, what about your side? Do you have anything? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, basically my side is quite similar to your side. Yes, uh, it also is. got two screens, and uh, well, we're basically also uh, uh, both work on, on the uh, overhead pedestal on the center pedestal two important things um, we, we, we need for landing later on are the flaps and the gear we haven't mentioned that yet the flaps are over here we can set them uh, yeah, to different positions for landing we are allowed to use flaps 25 or 30 so uh, 
since it's uh, your leg. Probably going to do a 25 landing. So today. probably later we use flaps 25 for landing. And uh, the takeoff earlier at uh, Tokyo, we, we performed the flaps 5. And again, sorry I jump in there. Again, this, this has to do with the lift formula. So uh, the speed squared is, is a huge factor for lift generation. This means if speed comes uh, gets slower, we need to get slower to land the aircraft. And if it, uh, if, if it reduces with the speed square, we need to compensate that. So in the final phase, to reach the speed we want for landing, we need to increase uh, the factor S, the surface. So the slower we get, we, we then move outside of uh, the flight envelope. And to stay within the flight envelope, safe flight, having enough lift, uh, we extend flaps and slats making the surface of the wing greater that's basically to keep it in a, in a simple fashion that's what we do yeah and the other thing uh, I, I just mentioned is the landing gear you might have seen it when we took off at Merida that's that handle which has the uh, well the same uh, well it's formed like a gear like a, like a wheel so it's a good, good, good way to remember it. It's a yeah. good way to yeah. remember it. <laughs> if you can't remember where's the gear here, is it? That's that. And we have auto brake settings. The auto brake, yeah. We will set them to bumping between one and four during landing, or we can set it to max. But that's that's pretty much maximum. So it's yeah. like getting into the uh, shoulder harnesses. Yeah, that's right. So we don't do not do that, especially not with the horses. So we'll most likely try to brake a little bit uh, smoother. Uh, one more thing you haven't mentioned is the yoke. <laughs> well, that's not that important, is that's it? That's not that important. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I totally forgot, of course. Yeah. How, how do you actually how manually do you steer fly the airplane? How do you fly the plane? Yeah. Um, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, though, um, the basic function I think uh, might be clear to you. It's just to recall it. I don't turn it right now because otherwise the autopilot would fall off the airplane and we're getting a warning sound. But basically you turn left or right with the wheel and to descend you push push it forward and to climb during takeoff during the rotation you might have noticed it we have to pull on the yoke to get airborne well um, why don't we um, do you want to have a demonstration right now? why don't we demonstrate that real quick so uh, what what ben was saying you need to right now we're moving uh, in automatic mode the plane is uh, getting its data from various sensors and from our program the flight path so uh, if i disconnect it there's going to be a warning horn uh, a, a, a siren telling us okay guys you're you're maneuvering now we, we've uh, left the automa automatic flight so do you see there's a warning coming up here now I know I'm, I'm flying manually, so if you pay attention to the um, artificial horizon here, if I fly a, a right, right uh, uh, turn, it's going to move and show the way the wings move, and I'll fly back, we get back on track, don't want to don't irritate the ATC too much, so I'm flying back to track here. And keeping my altitude, if I if I pull, I, I don't have clearance for any other altitudes. I need to stay on my altitude. But if I if I were to to climb now, I need to pull uh, the yoke towards me, and that would take us to a different uh, higher flight level. See, I've already lost 20 feet. I'm coming back. There we go. And uh, once we're back on track, I'll re-engage autopilot. And I get the confirmation here, autopilot engaged. The flight director is now handling the flight. Back to you, Ben. You, you got yeah. anything else? Uh, uh, well, first of all, nice flying. You, know, you, you maintain the altitude pretty much. That's Easy. Yeah. Perfect. Plus minus 20 feet. Plus you know, that's okay, I'm getting yeah. older, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I know, yeah. Yeah, one last thing uh, we could mention over here is uh, our, our charts, our e electronic flight deck, which is uh, the official name for well for the iPad. Currently, it's the uh, we have the charts on here. Uh, the yellow line represents our flight plan route, and the little circle over here is our current position. The data um, comes from the airplane. 
and yeah we are approaching here the next point is Safra that's the boundary between uh, Korean and Japanese airspace uh, oh, it just <laughs> just the warning popped up that I'm not connected anymore to the uh, to the airplane so yeah. that the location won't be updated yeah. anymore so the circuit got removed you lost in virtual spa space yeah, I'm lost declare an emergency yeah <laughs> another function we, we, uh, we used earlier was uh, yeah, the, the takeoff performance uh, app where we could calculate our speeds yeah. on which we do have to take off. I already got uh, the uh, the landing page updated so that we get the information uh, how much landing distance we'll need. Actually, on that note, uh, I might jump in right uh, real quick. Um, we do this. Obviously, you could you could, you could uh, make life easy and just say, well, we're just always going to go with full thrust and we'll just have to look uh, to stay within max takeoff weight. But this would, uh, this would strain the engines more than necessary. It would cause uh, higher fuel consumption and um, higher um, maintenance costs. So uh, what every airline does is we calculate the performance that we need for that, uh, that single flight. Uh, in this case, if you're light and then you've got a long runway, you obviously don't have to give um, so, so much thrust. Uh, so that that uh, is uh, saving the engine and engine life for um, which which means a lot. If you if you consider that one third of the cost of a plane goes for the engines, that's a huge cost factor. So um, as long as you can save the engines by using less thrust. Um, it's going to be economically viable in the long run. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, that, well, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, yeah, what else could I mention? We also have um, an app on here for uh, for our flight planning. It's just got implemented so that we get our operational flight plan on the iPad as well. Exactly, we got it uh, in the crew bus, right? In the, the crew bus, we yeah. got the electronic version of the flight to document. Yeah, we got the data uh, at the hotel through the internet and looked at the data during the, the, the drive in the crew bus from the hotel to the airport. Um, we can see everything here. We can have a look at the flight plan, at the weather, at the uh, no terms, which runways are closed or other special things we have to uh, take care of. Um, yeah, and since, since it is like... Um, on the way to getting an official use, we still have to use the paper flight plan, which we have a look on in Frankfurt, for example, or earlier the uh, colleague of the station got, got one for us. But it more and more gets uh, paperless cockpit. That's the uh, the name. That's the key word. The key word, yeah. So, uh, well, within time, within the next one, two years, everything will be made out of the iPad. Oh, wait a second. Okay guys, we're uh, heading towards the top of descent, that's where we start uh, descending, leaving our cruising altitude, descending towards uh, Incheon. And uh, what we have additionally, we did uh, show you some of the systems, uh, some, something that's really important for aviation uh, is our weather radar. And uh, we've, we've got it down, uh, down here, it shows, basically it actively sends a pulse, a radar pulse, out in f uh, with a progression uh, in front of the plane and shows if there are any echoes, any radar returns coming back to the plane. And uh, depending on how much water is in the cloud, the, uh, the uh, radar signature will be more profound 
And if you have a look here on our navigation display, you can actually see it. Um, it's, a, it's a green outlined spot with yellow and red in the middle. Red being the part with the most uh, turbulence and the most act activity as far as uh, upwinds and downdraft and the yellow uh, uh, part of it is a little less and green is usually uh, not not uh, no severe turbulence but we do need that for uh, we don't want to fly straight through it because that's going to it may may uh, depending on what's in the cloud it uh, if if uh, there are ice contents or or uh, lots of water it, it may damage the plane even we try and fly around it circumnavigating uh, for a smoother flight and just to save the equipment, let's end. Uh, um, finally, there is, uh, yeah, let's see if we can see that. Uh, it's getting a bit cluttered now because I've, I've increased the range of the navigation display. You can't really see it very well there, but there are a couple of uh, radar. Um, let's see, I'll take the uh, Waypoint Airport data. Yeah, it's. I can't, can't really reduce it much more. You can see it here, there's two cells right here. And we're going to try and keep the wind is from the left. So we're going to stay on, uh, stay on the wind side uh, of, of the track. Coming in uh, just the uh, just uh, southwest of the, the cloud and continuing past it. So it should, shouldn't present any uh, obstacle for us for the flight. Yeah, let's start the descent now, yeah, I'd say. Yeah. I'll do it with the initially here with uh, vertical speed. So I'll. Uh, uh, you could see the flash. Perhaps you even caught it. Um, we just had flashes from uh, lightning coming from that cloud that we're uh, seeing on our our navigation screen. So we're leaving uh, three four zero. Descending uh, level 180, and then uh, would you please a kind and uh, request a heading of? Uh, let's let's make it 300 for the next 40 miles. Okay, guys, uh, uh, ATC is calling us. We need to um, call Incheon or, or Seoul, uh, South Korea. So we need to get back to work here and. Uh, Thanks for um, paying attention to our little chat. I hope you learned some. And um, uh, any last words for you? Yeah, well, and enjoy the landing, which will be performed perfectly by Richard later. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, of, of course. Of it's going to be a perfect landing. Yes. Uh, <laughs> anything, anything less would uh, disappoint. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>
uh, meaning push the button, go on takeoff, uh, go on thrust, yeah. positive rate, flaps uh, 20 from yeah. 25, gear up, and then we'll climb straight out six miles, maximum of two, um, three zero, oh, sorry, two, two, one, two one zero. Yeah, two one zero. Uh, speed, but with this weight, we, well, we we might do it with slides extended, but that's that's okay. Okay. We'll do the acceleration once we reach the uh, go run altitude, four thousand, and okay. uh, after six miles, they want us to turn left towards Ronji, which is above water. We have a uh, highest MSA is over the city, three thousand nine hundred, and uh, the way we've fly the go run, we, we won't uh, interfere with that. Uh, maybe as a special point, uh, we don't want to mess too much with the North Koreans. Yeah. Since they don't like us coming too close, uh, we'll have to make sure that the left turn at 6 miles is, is uh, quite important. Yes, yeah. that's right. And then we'll um, go from there. We'll see uh, if we need another approach or if we um, divert to one of our alternate airports. Okay, uh, we've got Gukto level 180 is looking good. It's looking We're good, still yeah. on an avoiding heading, uh, which makes sense since, since there seems to be a, quite a lot of activity in that cloud. Yeah, you still got it on the right. Uh, yeah. A lot of lightning. Yeah. Very, very light. Uh, and I think we're getting into the. Looks like we're getting into clouds already. Yeah, we might not catch a little of it, but uh, it seems should just make it pass. Anyway, it's good heading for now. So, uh, go ahead with the uh, descent three, check. Seven, six, close, Agabo, it's one, four, two, nine, huh? Descent recall checked. Six, six, Agabo, checked. It's 1429, Landing data. Polar, two, one, four, uh, Kade, Tokyo, control, one, three, three, the small one, five, two, three, three, the small eight, four, two, one, four, heading. Two, three, zero. BREF 25152, minimum spiral 230. Briefings completed. Checklist complete. Well, um, you're familiar with the airport, right? So, yes, um, I am. 3 3 right. Uh, right yeah. We should exit probably Delta 6 and then uh, go southbound from there. Yes. What I would like to mention is last time we were here, we actually parked on the northern cargo apron too. Oh, okay. So we didn't go down uh, to uh, uh, Yankee 4 and Delta 3, but we actually parked at Delta, uh, via Delta 4. Okay, good to know. It could could uh, be the case this time. I'm, I'm not sure why, if it's full this yeah, we'll, time of year, we'll I don't we'll know. See. But uh, I just wanted to mention that. Last time we <laughs> we asked the controller twice, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> never parked there. And then uh, they said, yeah, that's it. Okay. So, um, should we turn on the seatbelt sign? Sebi, is everyone sitting? The Francis is the sitting. Is sitting down, feeling feeling comfortable. Okay, uh, go ahead. Seatbelt signs on. And uh, yeah, runway turn offs. You can turn them on now. Non-standard. Yeah, the I put on the wing light. Yeah, the wing lights. So good day, Lufthansa Cargo 8386 Heavy. Passing 190, descending 180, avoiding setting uh, 300, and we are able to direct pull on right now. Lufthansa Cargo 8386 Heavy, sort of boats, Roger, direct to pull in, expect runway 33 right. Inbound pull on, expecting 33 right, Lufthansa Cargo 8386. Modified pull on direct, execute. LNAV. The standard A three eight six heavy expect to lower in ten miles. Okay. Uh, Lufthansa cargo A three eight six. Also ten miles. That means yes. Uh, might get a little bit high. I might think. get high. Yeah. But that was almost to to be expected, right? Yeah. Uh, you usually get a shortcut here, and all of a sudden. You're missing out on like fif Subtle, yeah. 15 track miles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
as soon as you uh, as long as you know it it's it's gonna be fine Lufthansa Cargo A3 A6 7 cross pollen at order above 7 to Asian clear the alley is 23 street right approach cross pollen 7000 or above and Beard Island, speed three right, with the cargo A386. So, thrust, flight level change, speed, and... Oh, and clear ILS, speed three right, mate. Beard ILS. I can put on the lights. Approach checklist. Approach altimeters. One zero one three. One seven thousand four hundred. One zero one three one seven thousand four hundred. Check us, please. Thank you. I'm going to use some uh, speed brake just to uh, yes facilitate uh, yeah. the uh, deceleration phase. So uh, ILS to right already identified. General Lima Romeo Let's Romeo. Yeah, on my side as well. Uh, yeah, double check. Very good. Do you have any enough aid set? Well, maybe November Charlie, November on the left side for the missed approach. Set. Six miles, 210, left turn, right G. Reducing speed 250. Lufthansa Cargo A3, A6, Heavy, QNH1013. QNH1013, Lufthansa Cargo A3, A6. Selected speed 230. Okay. Passing pull on um, 7000, we may uh, we descend further. We may descend, uh, yeah, that's right. Well, that would have looked great if it's been uh, daylight. So the clouds, cloud surfing. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Ground contact. Oh yeah. Just wait a few more miles and then. I'll uh, activate the approach mode. Okay, yes. One thousand. Yeah, one thousand. Localize the glide slope arm. Flaps one. Flaps one.
Lufthansa Cargo A3867, contact Tower 118, Schmalzer. 1182, Lufthansa Cargo A386, good night. Good night. Yes, Tower, good evening, Lufthansa Cargo A386 Heavy, 33 right, 12 miles. Lufthansa Cargo A386, Sichuan Tower, continue approach, Madrid Gear right. Continue approach, Lufthansa Cargo A386. Gear down. Gear down. Flaps 20. Flaps 20. Line up and it's really late. Line up and it's really late. Line up and it's really late. Flaps 25. Flaps 25. And set speed nearer. Checklist. Yeah, uh, landing. Checklist complete. One two five one five. One two five one five. One two five one five. We just yeah. need the uh, landing clearance. Runway ahead in sight. Yes. Lufthansa Cargo A three A six wind two seven zero eight three. Runway eight five zero eight. Clear land. Three two right. Clear land. Lufthansa Cargo A three eight six. Give one five zero contact eight seven one four eight seven. Wind from uh, from the left. One two eight four seven come back. One two one eight seven. One two one eight seven good day. Clear three one five wind two six zero eight three on eight three two left clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff on eight three two left Korean three one five. Lufthansa Cargo eight Contact Soul Departure 1215 Contact Soul Departure 1215 right now, 315 good day 300 Minimums Continue 200 100 50 40 30 20 10 Speed breaks up Idle reverse. Reverse of snow. Inside tower of Korean Air, 647 heavy, approaching start for echo. Hello, 647 heavy, in Changra, 62 holding point on 8 feet by left, via Alpha, Alpha 4. 62 holding point on 8 feet by left, via Alpha, Alpha 4, Korean Air, 647. So that's Delta 6. Yes, it's gonna just give it a 3. Lufthansa Cargo A3, 60 right on Delta 6 and Delta. Right on Delta 6 and Delta, Lufthansa Cargo A3, 86. Perfect. We are past 60 knots. Welcome to Incheon Welcome. International. 
So, uh, I still got the reversers running, so I'm gonna close them right now. And this, this, and this. Oh, that's right. Right, with a right turn out to Delta. Yep. Uh, did she say Delta 6? She said Delta 6 and Delta, so. And then we'll no, nothing we still else. don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, probably she'll give us the next controller. After landing items, no FU. Or hang on, let's make it with FU due to the horses. Due to the horses? Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. As always with this kind of lightweight, the 777 just goes. Getting fast. Getting fast. Quickly. So, first to the left here. Yes. Jumbo jet coming out. Turkish 901, contact yeah, one, one, two, yeah. correction, contact tower, one more eight decimal two, good day. MA 323, April, push back and start up, please, face north. MA 323, April. Wing walkers. MA 323, April, push back and start up, please, face north. So that's what we are saying. Queen at 2090, contact tower, one more eight decimal two, good day. Tower 182, Grand Air 209, good day. April 1, Asana 387, request to push back and start up, stand 623. Asana 387, April, push back and start up. Push back and start up, Asana 387. Yeah, the guy is uh, standing almost on the building there. Yeah. set and engines cut great I hope you all uh, enjoyed the short flight to Incheon International now we're gonna have a look uh, if the horses are feeling fine and uh, the rest of the crew we're certainly looking forward to some uh, Korean barbecue and kimchi right we do oh hello ground Hello, Father. How are you? Yes, we're fine. Thank you. How are you? Fine, thank you. Please stand by for the chokes and external power. Yeah, that's fine. We're going to leave the APU on for the two horses that we've got. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Aircraft is fine. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, chokes in position, please releasing the brake. Parking brake released, thank you. Thank you. 
Shutdown checklist. Shutdown, parking brake. Released. Checklist complete. Thank you. Thank you. 